What's up guys, it's your boy Official back here with another video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you part two of the Southern Oregon series that we filmed on in Paisley a few months ago. First, before you check out this video, make sure to check out the last video, part one, I'll have that linked or in a playlist or, you know, something to that effect. So make sure to watch that part because I would say that is the better part out of the series longer video this one's gonna be a shorter video um we did we fished a lot of places in the first video the second video not as much but we did do something different and you guys will see that down here below if you're new to this channel this is near a small town called paisley oregon and there's a bunch of campsites you can camp there for free we went here over memorial weekend did a lot of fishing this river only has red band trout in it so we caught a bunch of those really beautiful trout they're basically rainbows but they're a little different i hope you guys enjoy this video all right guys, we are at another spot. I haven't been here since last year, but usually this used to be a little creek that got dammed up into a couple little ponds. And believe it or not, there are quite a few fish in here. Usually when I throw a fly in here, they eat it up instantly, but that right there was not there last time. The beavers dammed this up again right here by this little culvert. We're gonna see if there's still any fish in here. We're gonna try the Panther Martin that we just caught that nice fish on, and then we're gonna try flies. We were throwing a lure in this tiny pond after we used flies, and I saw this fish chasing it. Stopped the lure, and he grabbed it. Look at that, just a little tiny guy, but for this little pond right here, that's a pretty good one. Very pretty spots on him. There he goes. That's about the main size in here. Last time I was here, I caught one a couple inches bigger than that, but we're going to try to get some more. That was first cast. Look at this fish we just caught out of this tiny pond. That's a like the biggest one I've seen out of here. It's not big, but... That's bigger than most of the fish we've been catching out of that other river. Just out of this tiny pond right here. I wasn't sure if there was any life left in here. It's a really, really pretty one. All right, guys, it's day number three. We're going to be fishing some more sections of this river. We're going to probably start this way and either work our way upstream and then come down or go up and work our way down. But we're going to be trying to catch some more of these fish. This is the first piece of footage from day three. We haven't really filmed much today. We've been busy doing other things, so we're going to try fishing now. All right, guys, we moved down a little ways. Uh, we went up river a long ways, actually. Got this beauty right here. I wasn't even gonna film. I was filming for a while and I didn't catch anything. Look at that. Pretty guy right there. Nice red side. We're gonna let him go. That's our first fish of day three. Here he is one last time. We're gonna release him. That was our first fish of day three. Hopefully you guys can see the colors on that one because that was one of the prettier ones I've caught here. We hadn't had any action. I was starting to believe we weren't gonna have any. Looked like another one just swiped at it. Wish I would've got the hook set. I wasn't filming because I started filming for a long time and got nothing but me casting. So we're gonna take a few more casts and move down a little farther. And if we get any ones that are bigger than that, we might keep them. That guy wasn't doing too well, so I had to revive him for a few minutes, but then he swam off. So if I would've let him go sooner, he might've died. Oh, that was a fish right off the bat. I just couldn't reel fast enough because this reel's hard to see if we can get him again. What I'm doing is I'm fishing the top of spots and then I'm fishing kind of the middle or the bottom. That way I'm covering more ground. Oh, that was a nice hit. Oh, there he is, was right through this channel. Oh, there's one. Oh, that was a nice one. There's a bunch of them stacked right there. Looks like we're gonna have to keep Timmy because apparently he floated down after we caught him. So this there's a two fish limit for this river. So now we're gonna do another unexpected catch and cook. I was hoping for one few inches bigger, but since we're keeping one, we might keep another one. Just has to be bigger than this. This is big enough to keep for sure. It's probably 10 inches. He's gonna die anyway, so I don't wanna waste it. We're gonna keep fishing this stretch. I'm gonna try to catch some more. Luckily, I do have my stringer with me this time because I was smart and bought one at the store just in case. I wasn't really planning on doing a catch and cook again here, but hopefully this one will be easier to do than the one I did in the last video because I really wasn't expecting a catch and cook then. So we're, we're gonna have to go back to camp relatively soon since we have a fish that we need to keep fresh. 
Really pretty fish. I was, like I said, I was hoping to have one that was, you know, in the 12 or above range. What the hell? My lure just flew off the swivel. We got Timmy on the stringer. Uh, we're making our way back down camp and fishing spots, but look at that. Beautiful creek, beautiful fish. He's going on the grill tonight or the barbecue or the stove actually. So we had a nice fish, probably slightly bigger than Timmy. Uh, cast it right out here, got a nice bite. Cast it out there again, got that nice fish. And unfortunately, I left him in the net because I was going to show him to the camera once I put a new battery in. Then he got out, but at least he escaped safely. Oh, that was a nice hit. I wasn't even going to film or fish anymore, but then I couldn't resist on the way back. And then I got a lure stuck. I was like, I'm done. I don't want to lose any more lures. I've already lost, I think, four lures up here. So it gets expensive after a while if you didn't realize that. But we probably should have got Timmy back to camp sooner. We'll be there pretty soon. Oh, that was a nice bite right there. Oh, there's one. I actually landed one on camera for once. He's barely hooked. If he'd stop flopping, I'd get him. Ah, come on, bro, I'm trying to release you. Dang it, now you just got more hooks stuck in your face. What an idiot. There he goes, good. I had a feeling I was gonna, yep, yep. Before I hooked that fish, I was gonna say I had a feeling I was gonna catch that one. We got a nice fish on right now. Ah, oh, I knew I was gonna lose him. That was one of the biggest ones I've hooked this trip. It's about to start rolling, I should've. I keep telling myself I'm not gonna fish that much more in this section or film that much more, but it's been better than a lot of the sections I've fished. So I might as well while I'm here. Usually once fish, get released or get hooked like that and get close to shore, they usually find their spots and go right back to it. So we're gonna cast right behind this rock, see if he's still there. All right guys, we're gonna show you how to clean trout. I don't know how well you guys gotta see me do it last time because I was around the fire and there was people so I wasn't talking, but here's what you do. You take the knife in the butt, make a slight cut under the skin, just enough so that you're not ruining the meat, but that so you're cutting the skin open. And then just cut up through the middle of these fins like I'm doing now. Keep cutting all the way till you get up to the head. Then flip it over, make a notch in the head, cut all the way down. You should be able to peel the head with the guts right out. And then take your spoon or your knife or your finger and scoop the rest of it out. He's not as big as we had hoped for, but he'll still eat. He's over the legal size. That's what he looks like all cleaned out. Meat looks pretty tasty and compared to stalker trout. Should taste pretty good. What we're gonna do is take the butter, stuff this fish full of butter, and then put seasoning salt on the outside. Lift this guy up, put that guy right there. There's butter number one. There's butter number two. Now for the seasoning salt. All right, that's done, oh, spread this out a little bit. Oh. Might have put a little too much in there, but that's okay. Now we're gonna wrap this guy up and cook him. Onto the fire he goes for about 20 minutes. Here's what the meat looks like all cooked. White flaky meat. It's not terrible, it almost seems like it has more bones than the stalker trout. It doesn't have a lot of taste. That trout I had before was actually better. This is a red band trout, so this is slightly different than rainbows. I mean, it's all right, I just can't really taste it, so it just tastes like plain meat, I guess. Sort of like chicken, but we're gonna finish this thing off. That is what that looks like right there. That piece was pretty good with the seasoning. All right, guys, we just ate that fish. 
It wasn't terrible, it didn't really have a ton of a taste to it, but if you watched my last video, that catch and cook we did with the trout up on my property, that was a lot better fish, tasted better too. But this is gonna wrap up the footage for day three or part two, whichever video this is. So the only thing after this we're gonna show you guys is some nature shots and some sunset time lapses, hopefully. Like I said in part one, the last video, if I sounded like crap or if I sounded tired, it's because I had recently tested positive after I had gotten back from that trip. For and so I didn't really know, I just felt like crap. So again, in this video, a big part of why I probably couldn't taste the fish in this video was because of that. But I also, on the other hand, my mom had not been sick and she could taste the fish. So I think that fish just didn't have a lot of taste to it. It still tasted decent with the seasoning salt, but it just, it wasn't as good as some of the rainbow trout I have had. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed, make sure to go down there, like, comment, and subscribe. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, turn the bell on so we can get to 100 subs by the end of summer or by the end of the year, whichever comes first. I'd have to look at the analytics, but it looks like to me a big percentage of you guys that are watching are not subscribed. So clearly you guys have been following the vids. You just haven't fully committed and hit that subscribe button. And I think you won't regret it if you do, because I've been posting a lot of really cool adventures lately. So if you want to follow my adventures somewhat religiously, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It helps more than you know, a like, a comment, a subscribe. A new subscriber helps, you know, a lot more than you could even know so if you guys have done those things thank you your support means a lot keep it up we got a bunch of good videos left stay tuned for more thank you guys for watching peace